Today, we're looking at all three Tokyo Michelin star ramen restaurants. We'll be covering each of these three ramen restaurants, signature ramen, what to order, and things you definitely want to know before you visit. I'll also be providing my thoughts as somebody that's eaten thousands of bowls of ramen up to now. Think of this as your comprehensive guide to Michelin star ramen in Tokyo. Let's get started. For those of you new to the channel, I'm Frank from 5AM Ramen. I was born and raised in Tokyo and have eaten thousands of bowls of ramen up to now, as I mentioned earlier. This channel is all about bringing you the best ramen information directly from Japan. So let's get to it. Michelin star ramen restaurant number one, Tsuta, or Japanese soba noodles Tsuta. Now, Tsuta got their Michelin star in 2015. And for reference, each of these three restaurants, they have one Michelin star. Let's talk about their ramen. Now, on the menu, they've got shio or salt ramen and some limited time bowls. But what they're known for the most is shoyu ramen or soy sauce ramen, or as they call it, shoyu soba. Now, the word soba is there, which is normally buckwheat noodles, but they're not using soba. You see a lot of ramen shops using the word soba nowadays to convey this sort of elegance, but do know that this is very much a ramen shop that serves ramen. So the shoyu soba. Now owner Onishi-san handpicked a two-year barrel-aged shoyu from Wakayama Prefecture, which is in the west of the country. So this soy sauce is what steers the bowl. The soup is complex. It's three different soups that are prepared separately. Triple soup, as they call it. The first soup is three types of chickens and vegetables. The second soup, asari clams or manila clams and kelp. The third soup, niboshi or dried fish, normally sardines, and also katsuobushi, which is bonito fish flakes. This is a complex triangle of flavors, but it all works together very well. It's like a gentle river of umami. Now, it doesn't stop there. There's also fig compote, which provides a sweet bounciness, and also a dollop of balsamic vinegar. They didn't have the balsamic vinegar here before. I kind of prefer it without, but if you're looking for a sour jolt, it can be a welcome addition. On top of this, they've also got a cream sauce, which is made from porcini mushrooms and also yellow morel mushrooms. Before, they would sprinkle truffle oil on top, and if you really wanted a splurge for 3,550 yen, you could get the ramen topped off with black truffle sheets. But I think with the current situation, they're probably moving away from the truffles just because it's harder to source right now. For the toppings, deliciously fatty pork chashu stands out. We've also got negi or spring onions, memma, bamboo shoots, and relatively thin noodles that are made from six types of wheat flour. Now we'll talk about a few things to keep in mind and also my thoughts. So Tsuta used to be in Sugamo, and when they were at that older location, they didn't really have a lot of space. And the lines got so bad that they actually created a ticket system. You go early in the morning, they give you a ticket to come back later in the day. However, they more recently moved to the Yoyogi Uehara neighborhood to a much bigger space. And at one point, they were probably gonna introduce the same ticket system, but they don't have that there now. Basically, you just line up. And it could be a long wait. Putting aside the current situation, we're talking two hours sometimes. But thankfully, because they have a bigger space, this also means that, yeah, they can serve more people at once. Now, as to the ramen, of course, it's excellent. They got a lot of hype well before they got the Michelin star. So here's a summary of Japanese soba noodles tsuta. The ramen to order is a shoyu or soy sauce ramen, and at each of these places, and in general, you can of course customize your toppings as you like. As to ordering, you order from a menu, and there's English there, so it's easy. Maybe the X factor is that they were the first place to get a Michelin star, blazing a trail for everybody else. They also have the largest space of the three. Tsuta has branches in several countries, including Singapore and the Philippines. All right, Tokyo Michelin star ramen restaurant number two, Nakiryu. Nakiryu got their Michelin star in 2017, two years after Tsuta. Now, Nakiryu serves a very different ramen from Tsuta. They specialize in tantanmen, or dandan noodles. Basically, dandan noodles come from Sichuan province in China. They love their spicy food there. When this noodle dish made its way to Japan, however, they added soup and also made it less spicy by adding sesame paste. So Nakiryu specializes in this Japanese-style tantanmen, but one that's been elevated and also more refined, earning them the star. Now, on their menu, they also have shoyu, shio, san ramen, which is like a sour sort of ramen, and also an extra spicy tantanmen. But their standard tantanmen is their most popular. So let's talk about this ramen or tantanmen of theirs. 
So they've got homemade Ryu chili oil and also sesame paste at the very top of the broth. And below that is a soup that's relatively light and comprised of things like whole chickens, oysters, and beef bones. The broth is also slightly sour from black vinegar and apple vinegar. But it's also got this kind of meaty flavor coming from minced pork. Normally, Tantan Men features minced pork, not the sliced pork. I would describe this Tantan Men as very layered. You've got the spiciness from the Ryu chili oil, as well as the nuttiness and smoothness from the sesame paste at the very top. But the soup, you can taste some of those individual flavors and a little bit of that sourness again. A lot going on, but very well balanced. Besides the minced pork toppings, you've also got green and white negi. Now, as to the ordering system, you are given a menu, but this is while you're in line, and it's just a reference point for when you get to the ticket machine. So it's important on the menu to remember the number that you choose. I would recommend going for number one. This is the tantan men we talked about, but with their deluxe toppings served on the side. Those deluxe toppings include sliced and grilled pork, duck meatloaf, flavored egg, and shrimp and pork dumplings. This is a good deal. You can get the tantan men by itself, but I think it's worth spending a little bit more to get those toppings. Now compared to Tsuta, the inside of Nakiryu feels a little bit more cozy, I would say. Personally, I felt the most relaxed when I was there. Okay, so here's a quick summary on Nakiryu. And a quick note, I visited Post Apocalypse and they're no longer doing all the toppings. Much like the truffle sheets at Suta, there's likely less demand from locals who might be more price sensitive. So keep this in mind when visiting any of these places. Menu items can change to reflect the times. Now the ramen to order at Nakiryu is their legendary Tantan Men. For reference, I really like their shoyu ramen as well. You order from a ticket machine, but there's an English translation sheet that they'll give to you when you're lining up. As to X Factor, I like the vibes at Nakiryu probably the most. You get a great view of the kitchen and it's very laid back. Nakiryu doesn't have any overseas branches. For some, maybe this is a big X Factor and draw. Now we've got our final Michelin star ramen restaurant in Tokyo. This is Soba House Konjiki Hototogisu. Try saying that fast. Now with this place, we're getting a little bit closer to Tsuta again in terms of presentation and let's say the style of ramen. Like the other shops on this list, they've also got a shoyu and a shio ramen, but they're most famous for the shio. Now the shio or salt is Mongolian rock salt and also Okinawan sea salt. But let's just say that the flavor of shio or salt is more bright and it really allows everything in the soup to stand out. Soy sauce works in a similar way, but it's a little bit more in your face, a little bit more tangy in flavor as well compared to shio. Now the broth in their signature shio soba, they're also using the word soba, is hamaguri clams. Think of them compared to the manila clams as a little bit more clam chowderish, if that makes sense. And also madai or red sea bream. These clams and red sea bream are sourced from around the country. Now, of course, this is going in a fishier direction for sure. Similar to Tsuta, they have little delicate pools on top of the broth. One of them, for example, is a porcini mushroom oil, and another one is Cape gooseberry. I didn't know much about Cape gooseberry until I looked it up. And also truffle oil. We'll see if they still continue to add this. It's complex. I think if you're not a big fan of like clams or those flavors of the sea, this might not be the bowl for you. But let me on a side note also mention that if all you've eaten up to now is creamy tonkotsu ramen or spicy miso, and you're going to more of these delicate shoyu or shio flavors, it might be a little bit of an adjustment. And I can completely understand that. But maybe this one is the most difficult to comprehend coming from those heavier flavors. However, besides this delicate shio, they also have a shoyu ramen, and this one is not just fish. It also includes what is probably chicken and pork bones. So between shio and shoyu, I like the shio personally, but maybe for some, the shoyu will hit uh, closer to home. Now you're seeing a pattern, of course, the noodles are excellent, they're made in-house, they've got multiple types of wheat flour that they blend together. This is definitely a almost requirement with these three ramen restaurants because of that Michelin star. Now for toppings, the usual suspects are there. Of course, everything is excellent. And just like in Nakiryu, you do have to purchase your ramen on a ticket machine. Put the money in, press the button, give that to the staff. Here's a summary of Soba House Kojiki Hototogisu. The ramen to order is the Shio ramen with that beautiful clam and sea bream soup. As to ordering, just like in Nakiryu, you order from a ticket machine, but on the right hand side of that ticket machine is an English sheet to help you out. As to X Factor, this is a truly unique bowl. The way that the sea breams and the clams 
collide is a beautiful, beautiful thing. Keep in mind that they are stricter about photos here. No photos inside except of the ramen that you've ordered. They now have branches in Singapore, Hong Kong, and the Toronto area in Canada. All right, so let's do a very quick summary. We've got Suta with their very complex shoyu or soy sauce based ramen that they're most famous for. We've got Nakiryu with their spicy, zesty tantan men, but that's also very layered and very complex. Lastly, we've got Soba House with their shio ramen that really holds up a lot of sea-like flavors coming from sea bream and also clams. Now, I think take your pick. You're welcome, of course, to hit up all three. If you have time, I would do that. I really think it depends on what you're looking for, but all of them are a commitment. You have to wait. And I just wanna say that, of course, these are three excellent ramen shops that deserve the recognition that they've had. But I think it's always tricky when you're giving out awards. There are thousands of ramen shops in Tokyo, a lot of them that will never get Michelin stars that serve amazing ramen. You've gotta have a somewhat snazzy interior. And that's the case with all three of these. Any hole in the wall ramen shop, even if their ingredients are on point, if they're making amazing ramen, they're not gonna get a star. So it boils down to whether you want to have that Michelin star experience and maybe all the bragging rights that go with that. I was able to visit a Michelin star ramen restaurant. But at the same time, don't feel horrible if you don't have the time. When travel does resume and you're only here for a few days, if you go, you wait two hours, do you need to do that? I'll really leave it up to you. But again, there's no question that these are three great restaurants and I hope you're able to visit all three when you do come to Tokyo. Let me know though in the comments below, from the three, which do you want to eat the most? I'd be happy to hear that. We've got Tsuta, Nakiryu, or Soba House. I hope you all enjoy this video. And if so, please hit that like button and feel free to subscribe. This is Frank from 5am Ramen with a more comprehensive analysis than normal, reminding you that Tokyo is the only city in the world where you can have fantastic ramen at 5am. Thanks so much for watching.